Having studied the structure of Rn, we will now look at functions from Rn to Rm. As you are all familiar with functions from A to B, where A and B are arbitrary sets, we will not be recalling the abstract definition. Rather, we will look at what a function from Rn to Rm does. It takes an arbitrary point x1 to xn from Rn and maps it to a unique point y1 to ym in Rn. And we will denote this as f of the point x1 to xn is equal to y1 etc up to ym. Now notice that although this is the correct way to express this function, it's a little cumbersome because there are two parentheses that come next to each other. Therefore, we will often express this as f of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn. This is in some sense an abuse of notation, but I think it makes things very convenient. For simplicity, we will first look at the case where m is equal to 1. A simple example of such a function is the projection map. It takes an element in Rn of the form x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn and maps it to the ith coordinate. In other words, it maps it to the number xi. Now, as soon as we understand this function, it helps us understand functions from Rn to Rm better. How does it help? We can look at the function pi i composed with f. This is now a function from Rn to R. And this function will, we will denote as fi. Therefore, a function f from Rn to Rm can be expressed in terms of m functions f1 to fm. More precisely, f of x1, x2, x3, etc. up to xn is equal to f1 of x1 to xn, comma f2 of x1 to xn, etc. up to fm of x1, etc. up to xn. Thus, we can understand functions from Rn to Rm in terms of functions from Rn to R. And this drastically simplifies the study of functions from Rn to Rm. Therefore, in a sense, it is enough to study functions f from r n to r. As you are familiar with linear maps from the course on linear algebra, and they are the simplest functions from r n to r, we will focus our attention on linear maps from r n to r. And a linear map from r n to r has the form f of x1 to xn is equal to a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus etc. up to a n xn. And we now know that this can be expressed as the dot product of two vectors, namely a1 to an and x1 to xn. That is, any linear map f can be represented as a dot product with some vector in Rn. This in itself is an interesting result, but it does not end there. It has many other uses. For instance, it helps us understand functions f from rn to r2. Given a function f from rn to r2, recall that we can express it in terms of two functions from rn to r. Let's call these functions f1 and f2 and recall that they are obtained by composition with projection to the first coordinate and the second coordinate respectively. Then f of x1, x2, etc. up to xn can be written as f1 of x1, x2, etc. up to xn, comma f2 of x1, x2, etc. up to xn. However, the earlier result tells us that f1 of x1, x2, etc. up to xn can be expressed as a1, a2, etc. up to an dot product with x1, x2, etc. up to xn. Similarly, f2 of x1, x2, etc. up to xn can be expressed as b1, b2, b3, etc. up to bn dot product with x1, x2, etc. up to xn. What we are saying is that there exist such vectors a1 to an and b1 to bn. Now, as soon as we have these two vectors, we can 
obtain a matrix representation of this linear map. Namely, it has the rows a1 to an and b1 to b. This is another way of obtaining the matrix representation of a linear map from Rn to R2. Now, of course, this can be generalized to functions from Rn to Rm and I'm sure you can do it on your own. So I'm going to leave it as an exercise. I hope this very quick crash course on linear algebra has helped you brush up some of the concepts. If not, I encourage you to go and read up some of those ideas and come back to this video. Now, let us look at some non-linear examples of functions from Rn to Rm. And to begin with, we will look at a very special case where we assume m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. That means we are looking at functions f from R2 to R. And this extremely simple case, it's easier to come up with functions. One of the simplest such functions is the function that takes the pair x1, x2 to the value x1 square plus x2 square. Notice that this is nothing but norm of x1, x2, the whole square. Further notice that the non-linearity comes from the powers that are greater than 1. For instance, here there is x1 square. Instead, we could have taken higher powers like cube or fourth power and a function that takes x1, x2 to x1 square plus x2 cube will also be non-linear. In addition, we can also add some constants and make it x1 square plus 4x2 cube. And this will still be non-linear. In general, it can be any polynomial in x1 and x2. Another example is the function that takes the pair x1, x2 to 4x1 square plus x1 cube plus x2 square plus x2. Now, similarly, we can construct as many examples as you desire. Now, we need not just restrict our attention to polynomials. We can use other functions like trigonometric functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, etc. One example would be the function that takes x1, x2 to x1 cos x2 plus x2 into e power x1. And in this manner, we can construct as many functions as you want. And once we have enough functions from R2 to R, we can also construct functions from R2 to R2, for instance. We have to just take two of these functions and club them. For instance, we can look at the function x1, x2 getting mapped to x1 square plus x2 square, comma, x1 square plus 4x2 cube. This is one function from R2 to R2. Similarly, if you take any two functions from the list, we can construct a function from R2 to R2. And in this manner, we can construct many, many functions. And the case is not too different if we considered R3 instead of R2. As before, we can construct many examples of functions from R3 to R. The first example of such a function would be the function that takes x1, x2, x3 to x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square. Another example would be the function that takes x1, x2, x3 to x1 square plus x2 times cos x3. And a third example would be the function that takes x1, x2, x3 to x1 sin x2 plus x2 power x3. And in this manner, we can construct as many functions as you want. And once you have enough functions, we can also construct functions from R3 to R2 or R3 to R3 or R3 to R4 and so on. Let us just look at one example of a function from R3 to R4. An example of such a function would be a function that takes x1, x2, x3 to x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square 
comma x1 square plus x2 times cos x3 comma x2 comma x3 now this is one function from r3 to r4 and i hope you have understood how to construct more and more examples of functions from rn to r i want you to construct your own examples and play with those functions